Hey everybody, Ruan here from Tunnel Vision TV and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to do object tracking in PF Track. So first of all I'm going to start with a new uh, project in PF Track. So I'm just going to call this object tracking, uh, set the path and all of those things. My frame rate will be 25 and then you click on confirm. Okay, and then you're going to browse to your uh, footage, to your video file that you want to track. All right, so I've got this clip that I recorded with my DSLR. I'm just going to drag this in and then I'm going to drag it from here into uh, this section of PF track. And if we scrub through this, you'll see it's a very uh, basic clip of me just holding like one of these styrofoam cups. And you'll see I uh, created some uh, tracking markers on this and it's not really required that you do this but because it's just a white object um, then it's then it's needed but if, if you've got an object with some texture then it's not really needed to have any tracking markers um, all right so what I'm gonna do first I am going to right click on this clip here and I'm gonna go down to image manipulation and the reason I'm doing this is just to create some contrast um, because it's quite a flat uh, looking image. So I'm just going to enable curves and let's just create a very basic curves adjustment like that. All right, the next step is uh, let's right click on image manipulation and then I'm going to go to edit camera, this one here, and make sure you're on the first frame and then we're going to align the floor just very roughly so click on rotate here and i'm just going to rotate it kind of it doesn't have to be perfect um i'm just going to kind of try and set it so we've got a flaw in the scene okay so the reason i do a edit camera is to create a static camera even if the camera is moving as you can see if i scrub through this footage here at the top you'll see it's a it's a moving camera but when you do object tracking it will actually take the movement of the camera into account as well so in the end you will be given a still camera or a static camera with just a moving object and it will just match so don't really worry about a moving camera and a moving uh, object as well all right and the next step is you're going to right click on edit camera and we're going to go to geometry track and this is basically the node where you're going to tell pf track to track the object in 3d space okay so make sure you're on the geometry track uh, node and then what we will do from here is to load in an obj file uh, from something like 3ds max or any other 3d program um, now i just created a very simple shape like a cone shape uh, in 3ds max and i exported that as an obj file and we are going to load that now so you click on load at the bottom and locate your obj file click on open um, then for these user-defined groups, just click no, we haven't set any of those. And it will bring it into your scene and usually it will be quite big, like this. So first of all, we're going to go to translate and just move it kind of back um, until you can kind of see the object. And for some reason, when I export OBJ files from 3ds Max, they always come in looking quite, quite weird. Um, and that's because you need to flip the normals. So here at the bottom, you'll see flip normals. And if you click that, and you'll see it will look like a normal 3D object. Okay, the next step will be is to scale down your object. So I'm going to click on the 2H view here on the side. And if I rotate around here, you'll see we've got a very big, massive uh, 3D object here. So first of all, I'm going to just position it backwards a little bit so it's on the grid like that and then I'm going to go to scale just click in the middle drag to scale that down and let's go to translate again let's bring it up let's bring it closer I'm trying to bring it sort of into the grid area so you can see it's still far away so let's just do that let's bring it up closer and there you can see now it's kind of on top of the grid okay still very big so we're going to scale it down like so a little bit more okay that's looking cool and then i'm going to go back to my one view and then what you want to try and do is you want to try and line up the object as good as possible to your object in 3d space so let's go to the first frame and then i'm going to try and line it up so kind of move it back uh, use rotate just to rotate it a bit 
um, and translate again to move it to the sides okay let's just rotate like that and almost there okay so just roughly um, I think I can take this a little bit closer actually even if the object that you created in 3ds max uh, if it doesn't fit the object perfectly just try and fit a section like I'm trying to fit the top section um, and not the bottom section because I didn't really do this to scale so just try and try and match it up as closely as possible I can maybe rotate it slightly like that okay I think that is good enough for this tutorial all right so the next step is to track that forward so you'll see you've got four tracking buttons here uh, this one will only track one frame at a time this one will try and track all the frames forward so make sure you're in the first frame and click on track forward now this will take some time I will forward through this and you will see that this will almost never get a perfect track so let's see how it goes and I'll speak to you now okay so the tracking um, has completed and as you can see it went completely off the object it kind of kept the the basic movement but it's not accurate at all now the whole key behind a successful 3d object track is refinement so we're going to add some keyframes to refine it and then we're going to get one solid uh, object track so what we're going to do is let's just go to another frame like somewhere here at the end and we're going to try and readjust it so there are two ways you can refine you can use auto refine or you can use manual refine now with auto refine every single little movement that you do it's going to try and auto refine everything else and i used to work like that but i, f uh, I actually find now that using the manual refine works a lot better because you can make a few adjustments and then refine it if that makes sense so let me show you guys so with auto refine switched off i'm gonna just quickly try and realign this frame as best as possible that's good enough and then what you need to do is you need to go between the last two key or between this keyframe and the previous keyframe and then you're going to refine that section so you'll see you can't click on refine now because you're on that keyframe uh, so you just need to move back so that you are between two keyframes and then you click on refine so let's do that quickly okay so that will basically refine all the frames between this keyframe and this keyframe so if we just scrub through there you'll see the end is fine but the beginning that's quite far off uh, this keyframe is also kind of off so let's just fix that quickly I'm just going to rotate this into into place uh, let's just move that down okay it's a bit funny here so let's just try and fix it so maybe a little bit that angle and something like that okay that's fine and now we need to refine this again because we changed this keyframe okay so let's go to the center here so you can see there it's also completely off so I'm gonna move it into place again uh, let's just rotate this around a bit maybe like that uh, let's move it into place there and maybe rotate it a little bit move it back okay go between these two keyframes click on refine okay so now we're getting closer there let's just scrub through here so after this keyframe it goes off completely and let's go to the last keyframe let's move it into place um, I'm not gonna do it um, perfectly now for demonstration purposes so let's just try and get it as close as we can but obviously you will spend a lot of time just refining uh, your keyframes to get a perfect track so we've got that keyframe go to the middle somewhere click on refine okay there we go so that's looking okay uh, let's go back here let's look my right and there's a bit of a problem somewhere after this yeah so here we've got a bit of a jump ok 
Okay, so let's just go here, refine again. Okay, that's better. So if you see any glitches, like a little jump like that, just go just before that area and just refine it. And it will jump into place. So you can see that's smooth. That's okay. So it's not 100% perfect, but it's it's quite close. And we only have one, two, three, four, five keyframes, which is really not a lot for um, a clip of 150 odd frames. Uh, so let's quickly play through this. Okay, so you can see there's a bit of a glitch here. Maybe, maybe in that area there. So you'll just go in here and kind of try and refine that as good as possible. And because there's also motion blur in this shot, so it makes it a bit more more tricky. Okay, let's refine this one. And let's refine that side of the keyframe as well. Okay, let's quickly play through that. Okay, it's looking all right. And another thing that you can do is change the render style to wireframe and let's switch off the ground um, and then oh we were on the dark setting all the time that's why the footage looked a little bit dark but that's fine um, so now if we play this back it should stick pretty well so the next step will be is to uh, export your tracking data so i'm going to right click on this i'm going to go to export double click on export and then uh, choose your export format so I'm going to export to 3ds max uh, let's just call this clip 2 or something and then you click on export scene and that's that so you basically import that MS file into 3ds max and it will actually create an object for you as well with all the movement for that object and uh, then you can take the new object or the label or whatever and uh, just center it on that and then you link it so it inherits the the movements of the object right so i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial please give me a thumbs up if you like it and click on the subscribe button if you want to see more cool thanks for watching cheers bye